In America, in 2019, there are estimated to be hundreds of thousands of untested evidentiary rape kits across the nation. Only half our states mandate the timely testing of evidence contained in these rape kits. Many victims are being billed for the collection of their own forensic evidence. Countless emergency rooms and hospitals don't even have trained staff to collect evidence in rape kits. Even though it's estimated that one quarter of all women in America will be raped in their lifetime. In some states in America today, women can be forced to co-parent with their convicted rapists. Um, well, uh, I had this ex, and, uh, basically, like, he did a lot of stuff that I just really was not ready for and really wasn't comfortable with, and, like, a lot of my exes have done that with me, but he was just, like, the worst, you know? Um, in freshman year, um, there was a classmate of mine who would repeatedly touch me um, whenever he saw me, any opportunity he got, um, very nonchalantly, and um, tried to pass it off as just rushing into me and such, but it obviously wasn't. Every 68 seconds, another American is sexually assaulted. Sexual assault is not a rarity that only happens to a few unlucky people. But what is a rarity is people getting justice for their sexual assault. I was sexually assaulted by a successful Hollywood agent. The assault lasted only minutes. But what he was effectively telling me while he held my genitals in his hand was that he held the power, that he was in control. As I shared my story, I was told over and over that this was not abuse, that this was just a joke, that this was just horseplay. But I can say that one man's horseplay is another man's humiliation. No. Why didn't you report it? Um, because I was nervous, because like, you know, just sometimes you feel like it's your fault and uh like you're gonna get in trouble uh for whatever happened. Yeah, yeah. I did report the incident. I reported it to Jason Strickland, um, a former vice principal at San Leandro High School. Um, yeah. Why did or didn't you report it? I reported it because I knew if I didn't report it, um, it was only going to get worse. And I was actually really fearful because he was so much bigger than me that he could have done whatever he wanted to, to me. Out of every 1,000 sexual assaults, 975 perpetrators will walk free. Only 310 of the sexual crimes will be reported, and of the 310, a small 25 of the perpetrators will be incarcerated, who would want to report their trauma when practically no victims are brought to justice. Yeah. Why do you wish you would have reported that? Because I just feel like he just got away with it and like none of his friends like even cared about like what happened and it just felt like so unfair.
And what came out of reporting it? A lot of trauma came out of reporting it, actually. Um, they told me that because he didn't remember reporting it, um, that they couldn't do anything about it and that it probably didn't happen. Or, wait, can I redo that? Sorry. They told me that because he didn't remember um, the incidents of him touching me, that nothing could, no actions could be taken against him and that it was probably just an accident. And then when I said that that's not okay and that's not true, um, they made me reenact exactly how and where he touched me in front of two principals, a male and a female. According to Rain.org, of the sexual violence crimes not reported to police from 2005 to 2010, the victim gave the following reasons for not reporting. 20% feared retaliation. 13% believed the police would not do anything to help. 13% believed it was a personal matter. 8% reported to a different official. 8% believed it was not important enough to report. 7% did not want to get the perpetrator in trouble. 2% believed the police could not do anything to help. And 30% gave another reason or did not cite a reason at all. Why are 20% fearing retaliation when they should look to reporting as a chance to find relief? Can we talk about what your job entails? So I'm a licensed clinical social worker. I do individual counseling with adults and I also run two um, support groups, one for domestic violence for women and the other one is also for women uh, who have been victims of trauma. Um, and I, my job is uh, La Clinica de la Raza in the mental health department. How often do you come across people who have actually reported their abuse? Not sadly, not very often. Um, mainly, I think, I think in general people uh, it's, it's hard to find people who are willing and wanting to go through the whole process of making a report of sexual abuse. Um, and for the population that I work with, uh, it's even harder because most of them are immigrants. Um, and either they are misinformed in the sense that they don't know the laws in, here in the United States. And uh, a lot of them come from countries where there are no laws for sexual assault. So they assume the same here. Some of them are also afraid of their, uh, their um, immigration status, and that it's another barrier that they have to overcome. Um, but I always encourage people, I educate them on the, on the process of getting um, it reported and um, encourage them and support them in whatever decision they feel that they can, they can deal with. Do you think the people you work with feel more or less relieved after reporting their abuse? Um, in general, they feel way more relieved. Um, they feel a sense of validation. Um, and also, um, they feel like they're making a difference to make sure that the person um, doesn't hurt anyone else. As a professional, do you re realistically recommend reporting sexual assault, why or why not? As a professional, I do um, realistically recommend reporting um, for both reasons. One is to um, hopefully prevent the perpetrator for, from doing it to another person and stopping um, the violence. Um, and the other reason is for the victim themselves to have a sense of um, empowerment and and also having their experience be validated that what happened to them was abusive and they didn't deserve that and there is there are laws that protect them from that. Clearly changes need to be made regarding the stigma around reporting sexual assault as well as changes regarding the actions taken by officials to supply survivors relief. 
What changes do you hope to see when it comes to reporting sexual violence? I hope that the receivers of the reports, so authority figures, um, take it seriously. It's not a joke. It's it's people's lives, and not reporting it can, or and not taking people seriously when they report incidents can really. F up and that is on their conscience and I also hope that more people feel comfortable coming forward and reporting their incidents because it's not a very common thing you don't um, you don't see people reporting it because the people that they reported to don't ever take it seriously and that's a known fact that reporting sexual assault is not taken seriously and it's really sad Uh, I hope that, like, people can be more educated about stuff and, like, they know that it's okay and that they, it's not their far, fault for what happened. Yeah. What changes do you hope to see when it comes to reporting sexual violence? I think that one of the biggest obstacles is how the law makes it very difficult to prove. Um, so, um, I think that if there were changes in making and where the victim can make the report um, in a place that feels safer and the process not to be so complicated so that they don't have to have so much um, proof to be able to feel that they were heard and, and justice um, was on their side. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Was that good enough? Yes, that was perfect. Thank oh, you. Good. Oh, no, no, no.